He's young, good-looking, wealthy, and he tells a great joke. But above all, Michael Bublé can sing. Oh, how he can sing. This Canadian crooner is now the hottest ticket in town, a star who's made jazz and swing hip again. So much so, Bublé is being compared to the greats like Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin. It's taken a while and there have been many doubters, many lean years along the way. But 22 million albums later, his perseverance has paid off in spades. Bublé invited me to his hometown, Vancouver, to join in the fun of his remarkable success. The first thing you need to know about Michael Bublé is he likes skating almost as much as he likes singing. So much so, he even has his own hockey team, the Vancouver Giants. It's, it's, it's fit. Why don't you just shut up and get on the ice? <laughs> The second thing you need to know, he doesn't take himself or anyone else too seriously. Well done. <laughs> okay, now what you're gonna do? I'm gonna hit you're you. Gonna, you're yeah. gonna take my sweater. Right. Okay. And then you pull this over the head. Pull it over the head like that. And then right. you keep punching me. Right. Oh God. Oh Jesus. Your poor husband. Your poor husband. You're a brute. You're a Yay. bully. Sorry. Big kid. Oh, one, two, to big band. This is the Michael Bublé we're more accustomed to. Oh, when the rainbow rhythm start to play, dance with me, make me sway. The suave performer like with the smooth voice, who looks like he stepped straight out of the ever cool 1960s Rat Pack. Like a flower bending in the breeze, the bed with me, a sway with me. Do you think you're hip? Um, yeah. In a nerdy way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's really hip to be nerdy. And uh, I have a friend who always says, cool is as cool does. So yeah, I think I'm cool. Now, I don't mean to take you round <laughs> round circles. <laughs> Sorry. The nerdy Michael's in the room. Yes, she yes. is. <laughs> when did you realize you're a good singer? And when did those around you work out that mm, you might have a bit of talent here? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I'm 33 years old, and some days I think I'm a great singer, and other days I think I'm a total sham, you know? <laughs> so, uh... I guess I'm trying to get back to your, your very beginnings. And, and when, you know, at what point do you go, you know, I'm a kid, I like music, that's... Pretty natural. You obviously. want the truth or do you want a good a good story or No the truth. Let's go for the truth. Okay, the truth is I wanted to get laid. What at twelve thirteen? Oh absolutely. frickin' lootly. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. What else is there to think about at twelve or thirteen? I was, I um yeah, I just wanted to get laid. That's really the truth. Did it work? Did you get laid? It worked, yeah, I did get laid. Thank you for asking. <laughs> you based it. <laughs> <laughs> Adolescent urges aside, the story of how Michael Bublé found success is one of old-fashioned hard slog and stubborn perseverance. Fish in the sea. He grew up in the suburbs of Vancouver. His dad was a fisherman, his mum a housewife. But it was his grandfather Mitch who really nurtured the young Michael's singing career. And I'm feeling so Again. I actually was actively going out and, you know, finding work and going to nightclubs and my grandfather was taking me around and sneaking me into clubs and dig, uh, he was a plumber and he was giving free toilets to people who had, I'm not even kidding. For 10 years he toiled away in Vancouver's nightclubs, many of them strip joints and he was singing for people who clearly weren't there to see him. I just want to be your How did you get noticed or heard in a strip club? With humour, I think the simple answer, with humour. Just as simple as I'd be in a strip bar and I would, you know, come on the microphone and I would say, OK, guys, like, I know, look at how excited you are to see me. You, you don't want the girls to come by, you want me. Oh, Michael Bublé's next challenge was a record deal. It took him a few goes, but he somehow convinced the powerful boss of Warner Brothers to give an unknown jazz singer a go. Why not take all of me? And I sat down with Mr. Wally, the president, and Tom Wally, uh, who was very cold, 
And he said, well, Mr. Buble, he said, why would I sign you? I already have Sinatra. <laughs> he said, we have all the Sinatra work. And I said, with all due respect, Mr. Wally, Sinatra's dead. And I said, uh, don't bury the music with him. I said, I'll work harder for you than anybody has ever worked. And I'll, I'll make this, I'll make this happen. I don't care too much for money, cause money can't buy me love, can't buy beautiful me Beautiful Vancouver. Love. That's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Really. As the cliche goes, the rest is history. In just six years, Michael Bublé has become a star all over the world. Oh, hey, Mark, how are you? Although he still shines brightest in Vancouver. Easy, a lot of people just taking pictures. Sometimes in Vancouver, I feel a bit like a farm animal. <laughs> like, it's like, don't feed the Bublé. Because if you feed him, he won't be able to feed himself. You want, you want one too? Not that he'd ever complain. It's okay, go ahead. These are the people who were there at the start when he was unknown and desperate. Now I've got to ask, where does the voice come from? Uh, my dad uh, is, he, can, he has a nice voice, a nice tone of voice. And he's got a great memory, but for songs, it's unbelievably terrible. <laughs> Basically, he would pick a song and he would go, when the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie. When the moon hits your eye, and he would just like repeat the one line a thousand times, and I'd be like, "Get Stop it, Dad! It. Learn the damn song." Michael Bublé is a very approachable celebrity, generous with his time and candid with his thoughts. But there is one thing he's coy about: any talk of a Mrs. Bublé to be. I promised myself that I would keep some things for myself, you know, I would speak about most anything else. And, um, but it's hard enough to have your own private life, to have your own personal life. Strange that I was wrong enough to he learnt the hard way. The breakup of his high profile relationship with British actor Emily Blunt hurt him in many ways. I said you must have been a kissing up. There is a new woman in his life, he won't say who, but it does sound serious. I'd like to be a husband and have kids, and, and I, I'm guessing from seeing my family and my parents and my sisters that that will be my greatest success story. Is that on the cards any day soon? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, I definitely think about it more and more. think more and more about my mortality as I get older. As, uh, my body starts to fall apart. And oh, come on. I can't stay up late and party and things because I, you know, I'm hurting the next morning. And, um, you know, I've got a hip that feels like it's out of place a little bit. <laughs> and I think, I think I'm losing my hair. Um, are these jowls? When you put your arms around me. I get a fever that's so hard to bear. As old as 33-year-old Michael Bublé feels, his fever, critics dismiss him as being wet behind the ears. In the morning, He's been written off as a baby Sinatra, Come fly with me, a copycat fly. who has a nice voice but little else. Pack up, let's fly away. Do the criticisms hurt? Yes. Yeah. I was in Australia when uh, one of your journalists, uh, he was talking about football and he said, this player should be thrown in the dump with Michael Bublé and all of his CDs. He said something like this. And I called the man and I said, what's your problem? You know, and he said nothing. You wanted to take him on. I wanted to kick his f <laughs> teeth in, yes, absolutely. And later that week, I was with Delta Goodrum and she said, oh, you don't worry about him. And I said, well, what do you mean? I said, I told him I'd kick his ass and she said, uh, Oh, you shouldn't have done that. And I said, why? And she said, because he's like a six foot six Maori guy. <laughs> and I thought, and I thought, oh God, oh God, I could see him meeting me and just going, oh, look what I stepped in, Michael Bublé. <laughs> I don't want to have a billboard of me looking pretty saying to all the girls I love you. I just don't want that. It just makes me cringe. I'm a guy. I'm a guy's guy. And I like football and porno and books about war. And you know, if a woman throws her underwear, I won't, I don't deal with it very well. I'll grab the underwear and I'll say, you know, take the underwear back. No, I just, do you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't want to go see a guy's show who thinks he's all that and, and is singing to the girls and it's Mr. Sexy Man because it's just not cool for me. I just, 
I'd much rather see a guy who can take the piss out of himself. Well, so I think women are a bit smarter than that, aren't they? I think so too, absolutely, yeah. You won't find Mr. Sexy Man out here either. I've got you. Or not at all. But we can introduce Mr. Businessman. If you're in the market for one, how much does a golf course cost in Canada? Oh, lots and lots. Uh, Twelve months ago, Michael bought this prime piece of Vancouver real estate and plans to upgrade the golf club and build several hundred condos. Well, let's see if you can actually hit a golf club. That I cannot do. <laughs> Come on, I'm terrible. Can. I'm Come terrible. On. You'll see. I hit like a hockey player. <laughs> it's a golf course. Not to give in. Watching him play, it's clear he's had more hits on the charts than out on the course, but who cares? The comforting thought is he owns this place and he can do whatever he pleases. Straight into the brink. Did you ever think it was going to be like this? No, I hoped it would. I was probably the only one that probably had this stupid thought that it could be like this. Good on you for thinking. Yeah, even my grandpa. They said to my grandpa, so grandpa, do you ever think it would be like this? And he says, no, I thought you'd be the opening act for somebody in Las Vegas. <laughs> and I kind of just looked at him and went like, thanks a lot, grandpa. <laughs> they have someone at the company who's supposed to look at your career, basically. And they had decided uh, that in the life of my career, their guesstimation was that I would sell from 50 to 100,000 records. And uh, I sold 22 million. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> Oh, it's all right. It's all right, yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.